when I was 13 years old, um, 13, maybe 13, maybe four, close to 14 years old, I did a demo. Now, now, now I've transitioned and I've gotten the acceptance to do secular music in, at my house. Somehow I had a real conversation with my dad. I'm growing up, you know, as a teenager, you get older, you start to have a conversation. And I had a conversation with my dad. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to, I make music. I want to make music. This is what I do. That's the devil's music. There you go. <laughs> that's the first thing because that's that rock and roll devil music, you know, that's the first thing that come out. But then my dad kind of started hearing it too, though. My dad would walk in the room and he'd be like, what's that? I, like, I just created it. And he knew it didn't sound like gospel music that was out. He knew it was something that sounded fresh and unique about it. So then he kind of just went with it and was like, all right, son, if this is what your passion is, what you, I'm going to stand behind you and you go ahead and move forward in it. You know what I mean? And, no, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and and that and that encouraged me, like to have a father that that you know was willing to, because that's risky for a pastor. Yes, it and, is. Um, that's risky, bro. That's real risky. But he, you know, he went with his son, and he believed in in my gift, and and he and he and he, and he helped nurture it too. My dad's a big part of why um, even the boy is mine exists. Because really? it was mine on Brandy and Monica, I was just playing around one day on the piano, and my dad walked in and recorded it. And he was like, I'm telling you, this is a hit. You need to take that piece and make that into something. And then I did what he said. So, like, you know, you I, I look back at those moments and, like, yo, you know, that's nurturing. You know what I mean? If he didn't walk in and say that at the time, I would have moved on because I'm so fast with creating. I would have moved on to something else. I wouldn't even thought about those harps in the beginning, like the way if it wasn't for my dad being right there with that tape recorder and saying, I mean, God, we got to take that. We got to record that quick. We got to record that. So that's so nice. It's so inspiring, especially the position that your dad is in, because trust me, my grandfather, he is the pastor of our church or was the pastor of our church for many years. So I totally understand where you're coming from when you're like, you ain't playing that in this house. Like, like, you know, they, they, they got to watch over a flock. And it starts, everybody in the congregation is looking, how do you deal with your own kids? Don't tell me what I can do with my kids when you treat your kids different. So your dad, even embracing what you were doing and encouraging you, it was very risky on his part. But I love the hair that he did. Yeah, he did, and, and so when, I'm gonna tell you another part that's really crucial to my to to to, to my story. When I was when I was going to go into it, I got off track a little bit, but when I was around 14 years old, I had did a local demo for this group. They were called Triple Threat. It was three. It was three white boys. They were kind of like color me bad, but they were local, like around our way. And they had a manager though. They had a manager by the name of Kevin Crump. And Kevin Crump was actually, he was from Atlantic City, but he had relationships in New York. And everybody knew that about Kevin. Like, his hustle, he had, he could, he could get people record deals. He did it before. So people would go to him. And he came to me. Somehow he heard about me. And I was, I was like 14 years old. He was like, man, I got these three kids. Can you do, do their demo? So he paid me a few hundred dollars, and I did three songs on these kids. You remember the impact conventions in Atlantic City, right? Of course I do. So, so the impact convention was at somewhere in Atlantic City and Teddy Riley was there. The group, the group somehow got a meeting with Teddy Riley and played them the demo. Teddy Riley told the manager, he goes, I'm not really feeling the group like that, but I definitely love whoever did the music. He, he, tell him he's he's good, he's really good. So Kevin goes to a payphone, calls me, was like, yo, you won't believe this, because they knew how much I love Teddy Riley. And, and you know, he was like, yo. Teddy Riley just says your music is really good. He's in the last season. I said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna come over. He goes, and I, he left. He left. So my dad comes home, and I told my dad. My dad used to always have this one thing that he, he still has. This actually, he always says, "Strike when the iron is hot." Mm -hmm. so my dad comes home. I said, Dad, we got to go meet Teddy Riley. He just heard my music and he thought it was really good. And he goes, uh, "Where's he at?" And so I picked up a CD, and I said, he, "He's in Virginia Beach." His studio is in Virginia Beach. It's called Future Sound. We got to go. We got to go now. And my dad was like, you don't know that he's in Virginia Beach. He was just in Atlantic City. You don't know where he went to. I was like, we got to take that chance, Dad. You always say a strike when the iron's hot. So we got to take that chance. So little next thing you know, in the middle of the night, we hopping in the van. We hopping in the van in the That's church van. Night? That same night, we hopped in the church van. 
and we went to Virginia Beach. It's early in the morning, and literally, we are parked in front of Teddy Riley's studio. The, the parking lot is empty. We asked people when we got there, where's Future Sound? They told us the, the parking lot is empty. We sit there for two hours, like two, three hours, empty. We go down the block to the Denny's, get some food, go go back, sitting there empty. My dad is like, I told you. We came on, we drove six and a half hours for nothing. I was like, nah, nah, dad, we got to be patient. Da, da, da. Everything that he told me, I was telling him now, right? Uh -huh, be patient. Uh -huh. Like by the iron side, all those, all those lessons, right? Sure enough, man, here comes a blue, never forget that day, a blue SL500 convertible pulling into the, pulling into the studio with the top down, and it's, and it's Teddy. It's Teddy and his security guard at the time. And I was, and I'm like, yo, I'm tripping. I get out the car to go bum rush Teddy and the security guard grabs me like, hold on, hold on, kid. And I go up to Teddy and I said, excuse me, Mr. Riley. I said, I'm the, I'm the kid that you heard the music going yesterday. And he was like, huh? I was like, you heard a group in Atlantic City called Triple Threat. I did, he's like, you, did, you live in Virginia? I was like, nah, I live in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you get? I was like, my dad drove me, drove us up here. When I heard you heard the music, you know, we we just took the chance to drive up here. He was like, come on, come with me. And he took oh, me. Oh, I love this story. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He took me in the studio, bro. And then when we got in the studio, like maybe like 20, 30 minutes, everybody started coming to the studio. So now you got Black Street, all these different, all the members of different, all the groups and people that he was working with as writers and producers and all of that they all come in in the studio. So it's look, I'm looking around like, whoa, this is crazy. There's like 30 people in the studio. And he tells me to press play. And I had never forget, I had a Maxwell cassette tape. I never forget this stuff. And I press play on a cassette tape. And my style at that time was really New Jack Swing. Like I was engulfed in the New Jack Swing sound. So I play, I play, must have played like seven instrumentals and it was rocking. And the room was looking at me like, no way this stuff is coming out this little kid. And he listened to every, he listened to every track from the beginning to the end. He didn't put stop. He didn't, he was just looking at me, knocking his head, looking at me, he was knocking his head. And then at the end, he was just like, yo, man, you got it. Like, you, you really got it. Like, you got something special. He goes, it's an open invitation for you to come here, future. Anytime you want to come here and sit under me or whatever, you, you can come here. And I was like, that was like the moment where now, now that increased my faith as a producer. And it also increased the faith for my father because he's seen an yeah, iconic bro. producer. He's seen an iconic producer give me the props. It wasn't local anymore. It wasn't just the people next door that the yes people that you grow up with and they cool with you. They're going to tell you everything you do is fire. It wasn't that. It was, it was, it was a world renowned producer. And sure enough, man, I was at tech, I was at that studio every summer. Soon school 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 ends, boom, back to Virginia Beach, and I would be there for for months, man. I'll go down there and be sitting in the hallway waiting for Teddy to say, "Come in the room." And I go in there and I just watch. I wasn't really creating; I was just watching and learning and studying a genius at, at in in his world and his element. And I would sit there and watch. I was I was there when he did the the. Um, um, the remix for, for Mary J. Blige where they was doing a remix album to the What's the 411 and he uh -huh. did it there when Heavy D came and did his vocals. I was right there watching it and learning. Like So I take all of that. I was there when the Human Nature remix and all that stuff. I was right there watching all of that go down. And it, and it, and, it, and I would go back. Like when I leave, I go back and work on my craft, come back and play Teddy stuff. He'd be like, yo, you getting really good, like getting better. And I was just waiting for that one moment where he gave me that one shot, and he did. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.